Good Monday to you. I'm not really Irish, but it is really time for my news radar. If you're new to the channel, please do consider hitting that like or subscribe button if you do enjoy this video and be sure to check back every Monday and Friday for the next edition of News Radar. Let's jump into things. I'm Phil DeFranco. So honestly, one of the coolest pieces of tech that's been announced over the last several months has got to be Valve's Steam Deck. I'm super pumped about this thing for myriad reasons. If you don't know what I'm talking about, basically what they have announced here is a giant Switch style uh, handheld gaming PC that can run your entire Steam library, can do Steam, you know, in-home streaming and all that stuff. But there's more than that because it runs on a Linux, a sort of a, a customized version of Linux called SteamOS. However, you can get rid of that and just straight up install Windows 10. And according to this article at BGR, Valve is trying to get Steam Deck nice and ready for Windows 11. And that is pretty freaking cool. So I know a lot of people are already like, well, it runs Linux. You know, why would you want Linux on a gaming system? Well, they've got this cool thing called the Proton Layer, which allows compatibility on Linux for Windows applications like games and it actually works really well however you do probably lose a teeny tiny little bit of performance by doing this just like any compatibility layer you don't get your full performance i think that they're really damn close because they've done a really good job with this but running windows is probably going to be advantageous in some ways albeit you're going to lose some of the interface tweaks and customizations that you're going to get in steam os that makes it nice for a handheld windows 11 is going to be an option here and that's kind of what they're talking about here that you know look if steam os really is as good as they're saying that it's going to be then this won't really matter however having windows as a fallback and having the most recent version of windows as a fallback would be really nice to have and it also opens the door to a lot of other things right like you could install origin or one of ea's other 47 different desktop apps for installing games because i don't know what they're doing and i don't think they know what they're doing you can install xbox app and do game pass games there's all sorts of different options that are there that might work better in windows than they will in a linux based solution and personally, I'm really intrigued by the idea of Game Pass on this thing, especially with Game Pass streaming now working as well as it does, because currently the Game Pass king, as far as handhelds, is the Surface Duo, because it works really, really well to have your controls on one screen and your game on the other. However, I don't think I'm shocking anybody to say that a proper handheld like this, either through streaming or just playing the games natively, which is going to be superior, that could be a really damn good Game Pass machine. Think about that. You're going to pay a monthly subscription, 10, 15 bucks, whatever it is, and have dozens, hundreds even of games on a handheld like that. I'm very intrigued. Windows 11 coming to Steam Deck. So we just tangentially mentioned Microsoft and Microsoft's Surface Duo. So let's talk about Microsoft and another folding device just a little bit. So you know that there's been a, a bit of tight cooperation between Samsung with their Z Fold devices in general with their other devices and Microsoft. Little things like the uh, little things like the Microsoft Your Phone app have additional features on Samsung devices versus other devices. The ability to run an Android app in a shell on your desktop, you know, basically being streamed from this guy to your desktop, things like that. So Samsung and Microsoft, nice little cooperation. We've also seen OneDrive and several Microsoft apps uh, pre-installed on recent Samsung devices, but apparently this cooperation is going to go a couple more steps further here from Phone Arena. Microsoft optimizes all Office mobile apps for Samsung's new foldable phones. And if you remember here, we've seen some of this already in some of their imagery. So they, they put out this, you know, GIF showing off teams with whiteboard all kind of integrated together on the Z Fold with the S Pen and all that good stuff working extremely well. But they're also talking about more than that. We're talking about things like running Excel and PowerPoint simultaneously. Dragging a table into your presentation, one screen to the other, one, you know, split screen, boom, boom, just like on the Surface Duo screen 
to screen. And maybe that's the best way to think about it. Maybe the magic, the mojo from Surface Duo, that split screeny kind of stuff, a lot of that stuff is just coming to Z Fold now with some additional stuff like the Teams things that I just showed you. So what do you guys think about that? As Teams, Outlook, Excel, PowerPoint, as these things get more and more optimized for the Z Fold three and i and look a lot of this stuff is going to come to the z fold 2 as well obviously these things are just app updates a lot of the stuff is going to come to both as these things continue to happen what does this do for you does this make you maybe want to jump from the duo bandwagon over maybe it does maybe it doesn't i'd love to know from you guys in the comments down below how do you feel about microsoft cooperating so closely with Samsung. And sticking with the wild and wonderful world of folding phones, but switching to one that is yet unannounced, but is probably the one that I am not quite the mo second most excited about, because Duo 2 is still the one I'm most excited about. But what does Google have coming? So we've talked in the past about rumors about Google's Passport, whether you want to call it that, or the Pixel Fold, perhaps. Who knows what they're going to call it? Probably one of those two things. And we talked about how if Google is able to present a foldable device with a lower price and some of that pixel goodness, that that might be a really, really fascinating thing to see. However, some of that thinking has shifted now as the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro have been announced. Because in the past we were thinking maybe Google's foldable will be cheaper because... Pixel 5 was cheaper. The 4A 5G was cheaper. So that was kind of the thinking. Oh, Google's targeting the cheaper market. Well, that th that thinking's out the window now because the Pixel 6, Pixel 6 Pro, very expensive. And we now know, at least from some reports, that it appears that the Pixel Fold will share some hardware with the Pixel 6. And we're talking here about the Pixel 6's Tensor chip. Of course, this is just a render provided by Wakar Khan. I hope I'm saying that at least somewhat uh, correctly down there at the bottom. And this basically is what you get if a Pixel 5 that could fold. That's basically what we have. But we probably are not going to get this up here. You're probably going to get that horizontal camera bar like on the Pixel 6, which I'd be really interested to see what that might look like. But anyways, Tom's guide here has a nice step-by-step -step of how we've arrived at this point. So we have a tweet here from C. Stark, who is a modern extraordinaire. So they're unclear in this article where he's getting this data from, but he's probably digging this out of Android 12 source code, things like that. He shows here, Oriole, Raven, Passport, Slider are four out of the five devices that have a modem referenced as G5123B. Now, why is that relevant? Because the most recent Samsung modem is 5123A. So this is almost certainly an Exynos, a Samsung modem. This is important because the Tensor chip is essentially being made by Samsung. Now, Google's kind of giving them the specifications. Samsung is building it. It is almost certain to have a, a Samsung Exynos modem. So this indicates that all four of those devices, Oreo Raven, Passport Slider, all will have a Samsung built processor, has to be the Tensor chip. Passport is the folding phone. Oreo and Raven are Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. And look, this shouldn't be altogether shocking because it appears that, you know, from reports that Google wants to use this chip in all sorts of things. They want to put it in Chromebooks. This is going to be their chip. They're going to iterate on it. They're going to improve it. They're going to grow this thing over time and they're going to use it everywhere they possibly can. So as we learn more and more about Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro, what it's going to do in those devices, we're learning about what their foldable device might look like as well. And of course, what we know so far is relatively limited. We think that this thing is going to be, as far as raw power goes, not a world beater. However, it's going to be targeting things like power saving and computational photography, taking advantage of a more advanced neural imaging sort of process to couple that with a better set of uh, sensors for their for their cameras to make even better photos and videos than ever before. Like I said, other than the Duo 2, Google's folding device is probably the one that I'm most excited to find out more about. Is this thing going to be the cheaper device? We hoped it would be. I kind of think this thing's going to be premium now based on the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. Kind of think that they're going to go all out on this thing and make a, a Z Fold competitor and really swing for the fences. Either way, I'm I'm super pumped 
to see what this thing might look like. I love to see any new folding phone on the market because I am 100% sold on folding phones. Between using these two things over the last year, there is a 0% chance that I can ever go back to a normal candy bar phone. They are just so damn boring. And let's close this thing out with one of the wildest deals I've seen in a long time. Shout out to Don Kyoto here on Twitter for sending this to me. $210 for a Surface Duo. This was on CompSource, and I know that some of you guys have already bought one. I've heard from you. Now, of course, you've not received it yet. This just happened. And unfortunately, it appears that this deal has come and gone. It is fully out of stock now. But for about a day, this website had Surface Duo on sale for $210. Dollars And look, that is an insane price for a device that launched at $1,400 to get it for $210. That's absolutely nutty. And something that immediately popped into my mind is when Duo 2 launches, they're probably going to do trade-ins of some sort for the original Duo. And they're almost certainly going to give you more than $210 for it. I mean, that's... That's like almost nothing. Maybe they won't give me that much for my duo because this back is cracked on it. But, you know, whatever. $210 is such a negligible amount of money for some people. But I know a lot of you did go grab one. If you bought one of these from this website, let me know in the comments down below. And check back in with me once you've gotten the thing. Let me know that you got it and everything turned out to be totally legit. Because a lot of people were like... I don't believe this. There's no way that it's that cheap. But look, we've already seen it at 380. What's another drop down to 210? And remember, if you follow me on Twitter, I will tweet these things. I've tweeted so many deals over the last six months or so. If you're not following me, you're going to miss it. And you're going to miss when people like Keto here send me these sorts of deals and I can retweet them. And if you're not following me, like I said, you're not going to see them. So guys, that's all the news I have for you today. Be sure to check back, like I said, every Monday and Friday for the next edition of News Radar. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.